Hello. Weird time to be coming to you. It is 12 o'clock high noon here on the West Coast. And guess what? That means Kings basketball today. It is game 82. Can you believe we are at 82 games already? Man, I, I just want to say off the top, thank all of you. Every single one of you, whether you hear this later or you're watching, listening right now, 82 games, three times a game is not easy, but you guys make it easy and fun, and we love it, love it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll get you ready for the Kings and the Blazers. Um, uh, can we call them the Blazers? Is it is it the Blazers or their G League team? I don't know, but you know what? We're going to be careful about that because – We've seen the Kings struggle before. This is the pregame show on If You Don't Like That. Two, one, go. Sacramento missed you. Carter, stolen by Williams. And look at this. Oh, you don't like that. You don't like NBA basketball. That's an ESPN highlight right there. Whoa. Carlson comes in. How about this? Holy moly, Jim Bob Bowley. That is a major league smudge. And welcome back into the Kings Court Studios on If You Don't Like That, Ryan and Sacktown here soon to be joined by the NBA guru, Zach. He's going to get us ready uh, for... A little bit today, get, let us know who's in, who is out. Also, uh, we're going to look at some of the other matchups going on. And then, obviously, I'm not going to act like the Masters is not going on. If you can split your screen, split your screen. I mean, it is the best golf tournament in the world, in my opinion. To throw this horrible week behind us. Excel starts us off with that. Yeah, the two-minute report. Let's hit on that right off the bat. Uh, De'Aaron Fox was not fouled according to the two-minute report Bradley Beal made contact with the ball and then there was incidental contact or contact after that now there was one wrong call on the two-minute report that was the traveling call with two minutes left on Keegan Murray but again three times in six games the Kings look to the two-minute report for answers and the replay is going to have to be fixed. There's no way about it. And it's not just the replay. It's also the officials because the officials referee in a style still that um, would be the way you would ref if you didn't have replay. So those basically, if you're going to do one, you have to do both of them. And you got to hold each of their hands. BJ Sal 916. Welcome in. Good call the other night, buddy. Uh, let's go. Kings finish strong play tough play some defense. P.I. Trush, will we make the playoffs? Good question. Will we make the playoffs? I bring in the NBA guru, Zach. What's up, my man? Happy Masters and King Sunday. Happy uh, Masters. Happy Game 82. I can't believe Game uh, 82, man. It, it, it blew by. Holy moly, Jim Bob Bowley. It went quick. Holy moly, Jim Bob Bowley. So, all right, um, a lot of people asking about will the Kings make the playoffs? We can't answer that, but what are the scenarios going into play today, Zach? You got me, Zach? Zach's just, look at Zach. He's just smiling. Look at that smile. That's a good smile by Zach. He's so frozen right now. <laughs> we'll have to try back with the guru in a second. Zach, are you there? Okay, no Zach. So we'll see if we can get him back on. Um, so basically, you're looking at uh, the Kings. They're going to be, they have an opportunity to host a game, which uh, hopefully that's what happens. The Warriors are not caring about home court. Um, so really, and then also, also, we have to look at this factor. The Pelicans are playing the Lakers. Everybody tips off today at, uh, I believe, uh, well, 1230, excuse me. Why was I having to think about that for a second? Um, so 
what happens today? Does it does it really matter? Should Mike Brown call off the dogs? I mean, what's your guys' take on it? I think the Kings certainly have to win, but again, I worry, I worry about sometimes these teams that come into the G1C and just absolutely light up the Kings. Go Kings! And blank LA. Yes, Alberto. Uh, what would it mean to the team if they were to lose today? It's oh, a good question, Alberto. Um, I don't think it would really matter at all. I, I, I don't because the last the last five games that five of six that they have lost. I, I don't know that there's a harder way to lose some of the games that they've lost. So win or lose. I don't think it matters. Certainly you want to see them win. You want to get them a little bit of momentum, you know, because if they win and the Lakers lose, then the Kings can get the eight seed. They'll get the eight. If the Kings win and the Lakers win, Kings get the nine and the nine seed. Kings lose, Warriors win. Kings will fall to 10th. If the Warriors win today, that's going to be a huge problem and the Kings lose. Um, and yeah, those are our scenarios. As of now, we're looking at a game seven rematch between the Warriors and the Kings. The Kings would host that matchup. Flores, what's up? Uh, what up, Rye? I hope we get to rest our starters. Second half, me too, Flores. I want to get as many of you up as we can. Also, let me put this into the chat right now because if you guys would like to call, you don't even have to talk about the... I mean, I try to make it a little bit Kings, but if you would like to call and... Um, just it's it's our last regular season pregame show. So I want to make sure this show is about all of you. Let's go back to the guru really quick. Do we got you, Zach? Yeah, uh, I'm back. I'm back. All right, cool. So I went over the different um, scenarios, the win lose scenarios. But what else is important to the Kings around the NBA today? Uh, so the Kings, Pel uh, Kings playing the Blazers. We got Pelicans, Lakers, and we got uh, the. Warriors and the Jazz, the Pelicans, if they win, they will be the sixth seed. So the Suns are playing Minnesota. Only way they can get the sixth seed is if they get, uh, beat Minnesota and the Pelicans lose. So for us, uh, I'm not sure if you talked about it already. My bad if you did. But basically, Kings got to win uh, and the Pelicans got to win and beat the Lakers so the Kings can get in that 7-8 game and have a date in Arizona. Uh, with the Suns for that 7-8 game. Um, and if the Kings lose and the Warriors win and the Pelicans uh, and, and the Lakers win, then we're going to go down to that 10th uh, yeah, we play in Golden State. Yeah, we went over that. A lot of teams resting their guys today. Uh, do you think Mike Brown has a preference on who the Kings want to play? I think that for sure the Kings want to be in that 7-8 game. So – uh, I think they're gonna do. They're gonna try to win today. Um, I know Warriors are resting uh, Curry and Draymond. Uh, the Lakers are playing uh, Davis and LeBron. They're playing obviously, and Ingram, who was injured for a while, is coming back today. So Pelicans that's kind of weird, loaded. right? Isn't yeah. that weird? They they want to get them a little run. I get it, but they're gonna have time off before the playoffs. They get like a week off. Yeah, that's true. I think they just want to make sure they're in that playoffs because if they lose that game and that's Suns true. beat Minnesota, they, they, they won't make a – they'll be in the seventh seed. Yep, great point, Zach. Good stuff. I'm going to bring you back here in a little bit when we talk Blazers personnel. That's the NBA guru. Hey, just for you, King Edward, I can hear you right now. Is that you, Edward? That's you. That's you in Section 222. Come on, man. I can hear you all the way in the studio. PL, who are we cutting next season? That's for another show. I appreciate it, though. Dan, what's up, my brother? My guys from Pops Market in Elk Grove. Make sure you go check them out on Bruceville. Enjoy the game today. Kevin, uh, what are the odds the Kings lose today? Odds the Jazz win. Um, it's, it's impossible, really, for me to tell. I mean, the Kings at one point, 17-point favorites today. And it's because the Blazers, I mean, everyone is out for the Blazers. Everyone's out. In fact, you know what? This is a perfect time. Zach, come back in. Um, give us who's in and who's out for the Blazers. The question for the Blazers is who's not out. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, well Scoot's out. Aiton's out. 
Oh, the guru. Sorry. Go ahead. No, you're good. Dybul's out. Uh, Sharp's out. Brogdon's out. The whole the, their, their team is just playing. Uh, basically, it might be the Chris Murray show. Keegan's twin. I don't know if they're exchanging jerseys beforehand. Well, <laughs> you know what's funny about that? Chris Murray is listed literally as the fourth string power forward and the fifth string two guard for the Blazers. He's That's starting crazy. today at small forward. Really yeah. interesting. Um, but yeah, it, it, you said they signed somebody just a few hours ago, right? Yeah, they signed uh, Taze Moore today. Uh, not <laughs> he, he just got uh, signed uh, literally... Uh, maybe like twelve a few hours ago, and uh, yeah, he's pretty. And they signed him for the rest of the season, is what the uh, Blazers are saying. But basically, that means three hours, a three-hour hey, contract. Yeah, and so I'm going to bring this right back up. Hey, Kevin, why I can't give you the odds? And Zach, chime in if you want. But uh, when these guys get opportunities, and the Kings are one team that will let you get comfortable in G1C, most teams do. But guys that are going to be playing, a dude that signs a contract for one game, one shot at the NBA, whether he's been in the G League or grinding, whatever, you know he's going to come out and give it everything he has. And so to me, that's why it makes that question so hard to answer because I have no idea the personnel for the most part that the Kings are going to be dealing with. Yeah, the Kings, uh, they, they, they play, I feel like they feel the pressure when they play at home. Uh, and this is, you know, obviously another huge game. Uh, so they, they got to bring it. Uh, they can't let these guys who have nothing to lose pretty much uh, just be comfortable and let them stay in the game, linger around. So they got to, they got to bring it today. Um, I think there's a good chance. They did take care of business in Brooklyn, the Clippers, when they were hurt, uh, the jazz, they, they lost, the, they've lost the last five out of six. So I think they're due for a win, but you just never know. Yeah, you, you never know with them. I, I truly think in my heart of hearts, and thanks, Zach, appreciate the info. Um, In my heart of hearts that they'll come out and it really should not be a game, Um, especially if the Kings. Now, I'm going to worry, guys, and Everett and gals, you should worry as well. If the Kings come out and they're not, if they're giving up offensive rebounds, okay, if, if they're getting out physical, if they're not getting offensive rebounds, if they're not getting in passing lanes, those are the things that are going to set my little alarm off saying, uh-oh, this might be a 35, 40-minute game for Fox, Sabonis. And do you want those two playing that many minutes on those ankles? I am shocked. Sabonis is not on the injury report. Uh, it's good news. It's very good news indeed. But again, uh, you want to get them some rest if you can. And also, um, one thing we have not talked about, remember, you're two-way players. So Colby Jones, Jalen Slauson, Mason Jones, they are not eligible for the playoffs. So that's why Keon Ellis had to be signed to a regular roster deal. Um so I, I'm not saying you're going to get your last looks at them. Do the Kings make any changes to the playoff roster, or the play in roster? Um, we'll see. I know the playoff roster is going to be a little bit different, but it, it, what do the Kings do there? Do they make a move? So uh, it'll be interesting to see if Mike Brown keeps it tight today with the rotation or if it's going to be just a little round robin, get everybody some minutes. Hey, if you don't like that and the pregame show brought to you by Bennett's Westside Grill in Rockland, go to Bennett'sRestaurants.com. Do me a favor. Check out their specials. You will not believe some of the promotions they put on during the week. You can get a bottle of wine and a couple of entrees. Uh, I believe that's Tuesday night. Don't quote me. That's why you got to go to Bennett'sRestaurants.com. Also, happy hour there. Excellent. And they've got some nice big bars, TVs everywhere. One of those like really big U-shaped bars, which I think are tight because if you got a group there that's, you know, festive, watching a game or whatever, you're looking at people, you're looking at the game, you're high-fiving like Edward in Section 222 in the G1C. That's right. He's saying light the beam. But uh, no. Really, Bennett's, you can also get 60 different 
wines by the glass. 60 different. I'll drop a couple of them. Ron Bauer. They got Ron Bauer Shard by the glass. So go to Bennett'sRestaurants.com. Check out their other locations, menus, and much more. You can make reservations there as well. As I said, I want to get you guys all in here. If you want to call the show, you can. This show's about you. It's our last regular season postgame or pregame show. And I'm guessing for the play-in, um, I'm guessing Grant will join me for the pre. So... It's our last chance to all be together in this type of forum. Uh, Kevin, why not give the two-way players some run? I'm not saying you don't give them some run. That's not what I'm saying at all. But Mike Brown, I'm just saying he may keep the rotation tight. I mean, the Kings, they're not going to have the luxury of a week to get ready for their playoff opponent. They're not. It's the play-in. It's right now, basically. Starts on Tuesday. So um, if Mike wants to run them, I'd run them. But you saw what happened with Colby Jones. I think regardless of the opponent today being the Blazers and not being, you know, uh, very good because they're undermanned, uh, you got to be on top of the game in terms of game management. I know some people were not happy with some of the lack of timeouts. Last game in the second half, challenges, et cetera. Mike Brown's got to be all over it today. John, my man, John's giving love to Pops. Yeah, they they do some great stuff over there. And I know they've been great to John as well. And anybody else that's been in there, thank you for going and check them out. Cheers, Lance. Uh, have the injuries taken up, taken off the pressure? Sorry, your thing moved off the pressure for the Kings playoff expectations. For me, they have 100%. Uh, the night that Malik Monk got hurt, I, I think I said on the postgame show, that you might as well just, it, I, I said Sacramento is like a pressure cooker or it has been this season. And it's like, you just took the little, you know, the little top that you got to watch your finger for. So it'll burn you. It's just like you slid that thing and the pressure came out. So in my opinion, spot on Flores, uh, sub bonuses ankle must be fine. If he's playing, not necessarily Flores. Hey, Flores, here's the deal. I talked about it on the Kings court, by the way, if you guys have not checked that out, that's my daily podcast. You can find it on Apple, Spotify. Try to get you in and out, 10, 15 minutes. It's free, and it's a Kings Insider podcast. And uh, anybody that has been listening to it, you know we have been on the pulse of this team all season. So give it a try. I would love for you to do that. And then May 4th is our listener appreciation brunch at Bennett's West Side Grill. Um, so getting back to this, Flores, the Kings are not the best. And I'm not saying that the other teams in the NBA are great at it either, but not the best at reporting their injuries accurately. I mean, think about the whole thing with De'Aaron Fox, right? I don't. I think he was on the injury. He missed one game. And then I don't believe he was even on the injury report after the shoulder. So um, anyways, what I'm saying is there could still be something there going on in its gamesmanship because if the NBA did not come down on the Kings earlier this season or any other team for injury reporting, they're not going to do it today. Uh, Jason, the Kings are like a thirsty guy trying to <laughs> treat a five or six or eight or nine. Kings aren't anything special. They're exactly what their record shows them to be. Yeah, absolutely. Jason, spot on. Uh, nobody, I mean, at least here, in if you don't like that, the Kings Court, Jerry Grant and I, we're with you, man. We've said the same thing. I'm the one that said all season, this uh, this is a process. The Kings weren't trying to win a championship year, this year, and I know you are always trying to win, but what they're trying to do is open the championship window. That's what they were trying to do. And I think that they, I don't think they've made significant progress, but I don't think they've hurt that window either this season. Love to get your thoughts on that. Alberto, I appreciate it, brother. And I appreciate literally everyone that has been here at any time this season, especially the regulars. I said it on the Kings court. Um, I We might not put up every comment as much as we would like to, um, but, and we'll get better at that, but we see the names, Kevin, John, Jay, we, we know all of you, Alberto. I could just go down the list, Jason, Flores, Lance. I, I, and so thank you guys. 
thank you. So I want you to know we recognize you. We know you. You guys were in on the ground level floor as we started building this monster. That is, if you don't like that. Alberto, no! Uh, <laughs> Kevin, didn't think Monk was the team MVP until he went down. He's not the MVP of the team. Jeremiah, what's up, man? Winners say next man up, losers blame injuries. There's something to that. Jay, what's up, man? We need to lose or we need to see the Kings come out. Yeah, I just said that. I agree with you 100%. This game better never be in question. Mr. Wolf, what's up, man? Love your show, Ryan. Great job this year. Thank you guys so much. I I've had the opportunity to a rare opportunity, right? Because the, the the landscape of media has changed so much. And this is what I've always wanted to do. And, um, you know, when COVID happened, I, I just, it, I, I was listening to Romy. He has a podcast called The Reinvention Project. And it's basically make your next 40 the best 40, right? And um, by gosh, I've started living by some of those things and it's changed a lot for me, but to be able to come out here and talk about basketball with all of you and um, for you guys to want to come listen to our opinions here, um, it, it just means the absolute world. So thank you guys. Thanks to every uh, Jim's, his team, obviously Grant, are you kidding me? Um, everything he's done for me, Jerry. I mean, if you asked me 10 years ago or if you told me, 10 years ago that two of my best friends in this world right now would be Grant Napier and Jerry Reynolds. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty damn crazy and pretty cool. Uh, I respectfully disagree, but we are allowed to do so. Sure. Absolutely. That's what it's about. Kevin. Damn right. It's about debate. It is about debate. I won't ever support the Kings again after they shun Grant. I'm only a loyal fan of Grant and my fellow Aztec warrior. I appreciate it. Jason, yeah, our Aztecs, man. Hell of a run again um, for them. I love what they're building. And, and that's your prerogative. You know, we it came up on the post-game show last show. I'm going to bring Zach in really quick, wrap this show up here in a few minutes. Um, it came up on the post-game show last game about the Kings announcers and I get that Kings fans are going to make their choices on who they want to listen to, who they don't want to listen to. But I, I do think that it's it's kind of tough because we had it really good for a really long time with Grant and Jay. The, the best commentators in the game. They won in the game. tons yeah. of awards. Uh, they, they were the best duo in the game, honestly. it uh, they, they are missed for sure. Um, the, the, the guys that we have today aren't. They don't. They, it's hard to, to to meet to the standards that we've had the last twenty years. So, uh, before uh, we we got the new one, so it is what it is. Uh, we cherish the the commentators, the Grant and Jerry that we had, and I still listen to their callbacks all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we should enjoy those times, but we should also give people a fair shake. Now, I, I think for me, uh, one thing is, and you guys tell me if I'm wrong. If you've listened to the deposition of Ryan in Sacktown. You've heard this, you know my why, but for for me, growing up as a Kings fan, the people I listened to the most, Zach, were the ones that um, had an investment, right? Like, what was their investment in what I was invested in? So somebody like Grant, uh, he'd been in the market forever. He was in the trenches, right? And um, uh, somebody like Dave, I'll, I'll, Carmichael Dave, Jason Ross, both of those guys um, you know, Jason came from LA, but he, again, ground level, he's been with G man forever. Dave, he was a fan. He is a Kings fan. He's invested with you. He's in the trenches with you. And so I think there's some personalities in Sacramento that don't necessarily get that. And I hope that they come around to that because Sac town's filled with literally mostly state county blue collar workers. Zach. Yeah. I agree. Uh, they're, they're all the guys that we've had and, and cherished uh, the last years, they're, they're all grassroots guys, like you said. They're all from SAC. They, I think, you know, Carmichael Dave used to be a caller for shows like this before. So, you know, they, they, they know what it takes to, to follow the team and just be a great fan of the team. And uh, 
that, that's what we love about all the kings and the organization and all the commentators that we had and all the radio guys that they, they all love this team so much and um it's it we we got we had it good and i think we we, we give uh time to the guys that we have now i think they'll hopefully uh get more love than they have recently totally and jason this is a great jason are you that jason jones just give me a one if you are i'm <laughs> curious but um, I, I that's what I was trying to say on the post game show. Uh, she had never; she was a sideline reporter. She was not an analyst, and to throw somebody into that position um, without somebody that's heavily that's been in the business for a long time. And I get Mark has, but Mark's national. You know, he comes when he can. And I know Drapes. I like Drapes. People think mm -hmm. that Drapes and I have beef. No, I don't have any beef with Drapes. Um, but I think he does a good job. I mean, he's at least, I feel like he's investing in Sacramento. He really uh, is. I'll say this uh, for Katie and Kyle, they've definitely improved. Like I think their first year, the first year they had, it was really rough. Um, I think Kyle actually has, uh, has massively improved for, for commentating and, uh, and Katie, she's getting a little bit better too. So I, I think, I think that they are improving at least, you know, it's a, like you said, she was a sideline reporter for a lot of her career and it was a tough transition. So, um, you know, give them some time and I think they'll come around. I, I, it would be nice to have some more consistency with Mark yeah. Jones doing more games, at, you know, or I don't know how they do it. Mark Jones just comes like once every three, four weeks or something, it seems like. So um, it just doesn't feel, you know, we want to see the same team kind of every time. It just feels a bigger connection that way to, to me, at least with Grant and Jerry, you know, what you're getting every day, every time, every game they're coming, the duo, uh this one you never know if mark's coming kyle's coming so hopefully they can kind of fix that a little bit too yeah no doubt no doubt all right let's get to one more basketball question uh because i really really and this is you're not you're not wrong i'm not saying you're wrong I, i'm not saying you're wrong but i i think it would be yeah, anyways we've covered it all right um and by the way who are any of us to talk about that if we've never been in that seat True. we don't Absolutely. know how hard that is and you don't know i guess i would say for anybody that covers a basketball team been around a basketball team there are so many variables that you have to worry about you really do. It's a it's a really delicate balance between relationships with the officials, other teams, other announcers, other players. You get it. So uh, it's it's not, harder than it looks. It's harder than it looks, no doubt. Okay, I want to end with this. And by the way, here's my prediction for today: If the Kings play the Kings, which is what they need to do today, just play the Kings, and as long as they execute the game plan and they do them. If they do them, they're going to be good. They'll roll today. Kings victory. They finally give the Sacktown crowd something to cheer about at G1C. Zach? Uh, I, I guaranteed it last game. We got the Bennett's on the line for this. I, I do think they'll take care of business. 108-91 for me. Um, I, I think I think if the starting lineup is just it, – yeah, it's all third, fourth string guys. So I think Kings uh, should be heavily more talented and uh, – and hopefully the Pelicans take uh, beat the Lakers too, and we can get in that seven eight game. No that doubt. Okay. Chances. So Jason, I think this is a very interesting question. He's saying that he doesn't think an eight seed could knock off a one this year. I don't know. I, I think the West is wide open this year. I, I really do. I don't think there's a favorite, Zach. Um, the East to me is a little bit different. Boston's clearly a cut above everybody else in the NBA, but uh, there's not that team it, in the West. It, yeah, it, it, it depends on who's going to be number one, too. I, yeah, I exactly. Think, I, I do think Denver is a little bit uh, you know, ahead of, of, uh, in the West, but for OKC, Minnesota, if they're number one, they're beatable, to me at least. Uh, and, you know, from to me, at least, from five seed, to the 10th seed, honestly, uh, the tiers is very similar. So all these teams between five and 10, they, they could pull, they, they could, you never know. OKC against Lakers, you never know. Just the, you just never know what happens with experience. Well, it, and playoffs and who's one. Yeah. And that's exactly. And I'm, I just want to close on this. I know we're getting ready to get you to the Kings and the Blazers, but you look at the West. Let me pull up the current standings really quick because it's a really important point to make. 
uh, the Kings, you know, they're what? They're four and six, right? Is it four and six or five and five over their last 10? The Kings are, oh no, three and seven. Okay. So this is why I think that there's going to be parody or there could be parody. Look at what the Warriors have done in their last 10. Eight and two. Look at what the Lakers have done. Seven and three. You know, like, it, I, I, I guess Jason... Life. Jason's basically saying if the Kings end up an eight seed, they're not beating a one seed. <laughs> so fair enough. <laughs> That's fair, fair. Enough. That's fair. All right. Hey, well, if it's Minnesota, I, I think it would be a good series, actually. But For hey, sure. Zach, thank you so much, brother. Appreciate it, man. Zach killing it, the NBA guru. Okay, here's what I want to let you know. Halftime, we will be right back. Uh, Jerry Reynolds will be here. Really looking forward to that. Um, obviously, the Masters is going on as well a lot of good nba all the games tip off at the same time here's what i want to close with so there is the qr code for grant's uh youtube channel you can scan that that'll take you to uh his channel you can get exclusive rants and uh find out about all our other shows besides our game day king shows there but here's why i'm also putting it up and thank you by the way if you've already subscribed seven thousand. that's awesome um but we are going to be putting up some items for auction, okay? So I'm not going to speak for Grant. We rarely put items or we rarely do anything for fundraising for the channel. Um, and we, we appreciate all your support when you guys do the super chats and all that. It really means a lot. But look, Grant and I aren't doing the thing where uh, you only get your comment read if there's a super chat. That's, that's just not how we roll. And we don't knock people for doing that. It's business. But you know, it's just not what we do. But we are going to do these auctions. And it's not just so much about raising money for the channel and the season. It's also really about the stuff that we're giving away. Grant has three shirts from the original Jerry Reynolds show, the original Jerry Reynolds show. And one is autographed by Larry Bird and Jerry Reynolds. The other Wayman Tisdale and Jerry Reynolds. The other, I believe is just Jerry and Grant. I will verify now. Each of those shirts is going to come with a unique experience. Uh, for instance, one of the experiences is going to be dinner at Bennett's and then courtside uh, with me at a Stockton Kings game. Another is going to be some digital time one-on-one -on -one grant. If you're an upcoming broadcaster, if you want to talk basketball with him, if you don't want to talk basketball at all and you want to talk about something else with Grant, um, you can certainly um, use that time, do whatever. Who knows? Maybe you create a relationship with Grant out of that. I mean, look at Grant and I now. It's crazy. But um, the other experience, we're going to give away a huge uh, shout out to Eric Snyder, one of my friends. We're going to have two spots at Valley High Country Club for uh, you and a guest to come play with Eric and I at the country club. Uh, so we're going to give away some experiences. We're going to do it kind of like we did when Grant and I shaved our heads for charity and we raised about 15,000. We did some experiences there. So look for those items coming up. Um, and if you are interested, we would really, really love your guys' bids and help because as you know, Kings Court Studios is built. That's done. But I I'd like to up my boy Napes. What do you guys think? I think I think his studio deserves some upgrading. So let's help it out. You guys love him. I love him too. And by the way, we love the Kings. Go Kings. Hey, Edward in section 222. Make it loud, brother. I want you to be saying, holy oh, moly, Jim Matt Bowie. There we go. All right. Go Kings. Light the beam. We'll see you at the half. Huge thanks to Zach, NBA guru, and all of you. Literally all of you. 299 watching right now. It has been an amazing and humbling season. Um, and I am the luckiest man in the world to get to have this opportunity to spend with all of you every game day. Have a good one. See you at the half.